everyone and welcome back to In the Greenhouse, the relaxing little behind the scenes series here with Siri. As we talk about all of the different adventures we go on, learn a little bit more about our community, and I share some of my personal life because people are curious and I'm happy to encourage curiosity. And today I have something very fun to show you guys. Look, our little palm tree has turned into a weeper and it has some gigantic berries on it. I may have overdone it a little bit with some of our plant food, but I think that, you know, everything turned out all right. I'm very happy to see just how this little guy flourishes. <gasps> oh no, bugs. All right, I got you. I got you. There you go. Get off my little plant. And our little ridge balls, the goldenberry ridge balls are doing quite well, so I'm very happy with them too. We need to do a little bit of growing uh, some of our cash crops, aka our blue roses, the mythical blue roses from the island of Isodola, I think it's called. Let's see, where did I take the thing go? Do, 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 do. Uh, wink! Isola, excuse me. So we need to do a little bit of growing of some of our blue roses to get our funds back up. But the garden is looking beautiful. I'm really happy with how the greenhouse is turning out. We've got all sorts of amazing plants popping out. It's just really fun to spend a little bit of time getting into the nitty gritty of just breeding random things and having fun as we see what turns up. Now, what did I do with this one? That's our rose cactus. Oh, we crossed it with a pitcher plant, so that should make an interesting mix. Well, we'll have to get these little seeds out. How much do they sell for? Ooh, that's a good sign. Let's put those there. And then this one's mature. Do I have? Yep, I've got those. So, oh, there's a little spider. Oh, oh no, I didn't want to. Ah, we got it. Yeah, it was a little common spider. All right, so actually, let's cross our rose cactus with our melon weeper, as I'm going to call it and see what we end up with because that should be a pretty interesting pretty interesting result right there and what a beautiful cactus too look at all those little roses i love it i love it all right and the ridge balls how are we doing on doing okay there so let's cross that with the weeper and see what we get that should be pretty interesting oh and this guy has a little damaged leaf there we go all right, well, we took care of everybody. So now we'll sit in the nursery and I will go through some of your amazing, fun questions that you guys have left me. You guys can always ask me anything. Um, I may not answer some of the questions, but you we have an amazing community. I've never gotten a question that I feel uncomfortable with. And today is some more of the fun animal and plant questions. From Melissa, would you rather live in a world full of plants and no animals or a world full of animals and no plants? And I would rather live in a world full of plants and no animals for a couple of reasons. One, then I'm not going to, to have to eat animals or be eaten by animals because if you take out plants, you remove a huge part of the ecosystem. Plants can function on their own without having to consume animals, but animals usually need to consume plants in order to keep everything moving and grooving. And if you take out all the plants, then suddenly everybody's a carnivore, and that would be a really scary world to live on if everything was a carnivore, not a scrap of grass anywhere, just a barren, desolate, rocky planet covered in animals that just thrive off of consuming one another. Or at least that's how I think it could be. It could also be a really amazing rocky planet with not a single plant, but maybe it has pools of water everywhere that have all sorts of different plant animal hybrids walking around for all I know. Maybe it's a really beautiful planet that is covered in amazing mineral formations that glitter in the sun and coral formations because coral is a, a, an animal, you know? So maybe, maybe it's a world like that. Hmm. I think, I think that'd be a fun world, actually. Now I kind of want to write a sci-fi book about it. <laughs> and our little plants have already sold, so we can pop back into the greenhouse. My goodness. What a productive little morning already. We'll have to see what kind of fun new seed mixes we end up with. Let's see. Anybody yet? Nope, nobody yet. All right. Ooh, $93. That's going to turn into an interesting little plant. And unfortunately, do we have enough money? Hmm, let's see. 
Oh, we're just a little bit short. We don't have enough money just yet to be able to afford an Instagirl Raper Bomb. But I'll give it a little bit. Once these two kick out some more seeds for me, then we'll sell them and we'll get into Vapor Bomb so we can watch the plants grow while we answer some questions. From Logan, what is the strangest plant you've ever heard of or seen? And my answer there is the carrion flower. It has the smell of rotting flesh and it's huge. Some of the varieties of the carrion flower and the carrion flower gets its name from the fact that it smells like rotting human flesh, which is really one of the most disgusting smells ever. Totally ever. I only happen to know this smell because of <laughs> being somewhat trained like in my in my nursing uh university oh memories coming back yuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> basically i think the carrion flower right now is the oddest plant that i have ever seen or heard of it makes complete sense for it to be what it is if you think about it though so i guess odd isn't really the best in terms of is the plant odd um there like to me if an, a plant is odd it's if it doesn't make a lot of sense or if it does something in a really roundabout way but I think the carrion flower is actually really smart. What better way to attract the pollinators that it prefers, which is flies and things like that. Come here, little dragonfly. No, gotcha. Again, I don't know where I'm selling those dragonflies. I'm just going to pretend it's to you guys. That would actually be kind of fun to make a whole bunch of like little charms out of all these little, little butterflies and animals and all these plants and send it to you guys. I would love that. That would be really fun. Maybe I'll work on making some clay charms that way. <laughs> But yeah, so the carrion flower makes sense, actually. I guess calling it an odd plant uh, doesn't really do it justice. Because if you want your pollinators to show up, you need to smell nice for them. And what smells nicer to a fly than rotting flesh? So it makes a lot of sense. I think their sheer size is what fascinates me the most. How huge they can get. They're gigantic. I think uh, like the, the Latin phrase titan is in one of their latin names as well just to refer to its huge size these i think they get over six feet these plants uh some varieties really fascinating and they bloom very rarely maybe i'll do a zoo bite on those once i get around to the zoo bites ah so they're pretty cool so i think they're pretty amazing but i bet if you asked me another day what odd plant am i thinking about i'd probably answer with a different plant let's see and then now this is a question from i'm turning what is your take on the whale shark? Do you like it or is it just okay? And really, I do like the whale shark. I don't know much about it. That's mostly from being raised in the Midwest, far, far away from any ocean. I only saw the ocean for the first time when I was 26, or I don't know, how old was I? I had just turned 24 on my 24th birthday. I saw the ocean for the first time up close and personal. And it was pretty amazing. Oh no, we're all out of all of our things. Wow, we really need to earn some more money. So we're going to need to uh, kind of get on top of that just a little bit, huh? Oh, there was a little bug. Well, I guess we could catch things and that would be helpful for getting money. Also, we should sort our seed chest so we have like the extinct seed varieties tucked, tucked somewhere safely, actually. So we don't accidentally send them all out. Let's see, let's grab you. You're not an extinct seed, but... I think you're kind of important. Uh oh. Oh good. I was like, oh no, do we not have our, our really super duper rare little blue roses? There we go. There we go. So we'll make this like the super rare plant selection where I only have one variety of each of these seeds. So we need to keep a good eye on them. Oh, I forgot we had those Nox plants. We'll have to play more with those too. So let's see. Yeah, I, th I don't know much about the whale shark because I grew up far away from the ocean. Um, marine biology just was not something I ever felt interested in before because I didn't feel connected to the ocean, even though my heritage is Hawaiian. And I'm hoping as time goes on, that'll change and I will feel a little more connected with the ocean and a little more into it. Um, especially if we get to move to Hawaii, because I would really love to know, get to know the beaches of my ancestral home. That would be really cool to me. I've never been to Hawaii yet, and that's something I hope to do one day. Working hard so you can get there, you know? It's, I mean, when you tell people, I want to go to Hawaii, and then they're like, yeah, so do I. But, you know, it means a lot for me because that's where my family is from. I look more Hawaiian than European, even though I'm a mix uh, between mostly German. And I just, basically, I joke I'm a mix between Hawaiian and American mutt because that's just kind of like my mom's side of the family, a little bit of everything, <laughs> but mostly German. And actually, there's German on the Hawaiian side, too. Uh, but I look Hawaiian. I get treated as a Hawaiian. Well, most people don't know what to make of me because they're they're not 
familiar with Polynesians. It's always exciting for me when someone runs up to me and they're like, are you, are you Hawaiian? And I'm like, yeah, how'd you know? Because they never know. And they're like, oh, I traveled to Hawaii last year and you look just like everyone there. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool because I've never seen people who look like me. It's just me and my cousins and we live in the Midwest. So one day it would be amazing to go to the place where my ancestors are from. And maybe that's Germany too. I wouldn't mind visiting Germany either. And who knows where else? I really should look into that some more. That, that might be fun. But yes, yeah, so in a roundabout way, I am not very familiar with the whale shark, uh, but I would love to become more familiar. I think it's amazing. I don't know if I really think any animal is just okay, because if I set my sights on an animal, I can't stop going, oh, isn't this amazing? It does this, this, and this, and it has these qualities, and it evolved this way, and it has this kind of biology and lives in this environment. I get excited. So I really don't ever look at any animal and go, oh, it's just okay. But that's because it's, it's exciting. It's my passion. I love it. And from Emily, can you show off all your pets? And I would be very happy to, Emily. I will try to get around to doing that soon, maybe for our 7,000 subscriber video, because that's coming up really quickly. I'm very happy our community is growing so well, and I hope that we can engage even more people in their passion for the natural world at this rate. All right, let's see. Let's put a few of these seeds away. We can sell this extra seed. We'll put that there. Put this here. I think we can sell that plant now. Let's see a couple of these over here. We can probably sell the weeper now. Ooh, and we have some new seeds to work with. So let's get these guys sold. Let's see. Can I sell you? Do I have backups of you? I've got a couple backups. I think we'll be okay if I sell it because we're low on money. All right, there we go. Alright, so yeah, I will hopefully show off all my pets. Keep in mind, I refer to um, many of the pets that don't live with me as my pets still. Right now, I have four crested geckos. I gave five away before I moved up into the mountains because nine felt like a lot. And they were leftovers from an even bigger colony of rescue crested geckos that I had had. So it's very important, even if you have a big heart, to make sure that you always stay within your means when you're taking care of your animals. And I knew I had to winnow down. I was very exacting about who I chose to give my geckos to as well. I made sure they knew what they were doing and I'm very happy with the man who got them. So very, very content with that. But I only have four now, but I feel better because I, I know they're within my means to take care of. So that's responsible pet ownership there. Uh, and I have, let's see, oh man. Uh, <laughs> Well, my finches are easy to take care of, first of all. So I've got nine finches right now. I have persimmon and ossei, the parents, and they have had eight babies over the course of the last year, all of whom are fledging, uh, have fledged, and they've put their, their adult colors on. Just a couple left over from the butternut pecan clutch, which is the second clutch. They're called butternut pecan clutch, if you guys didn't know. Uh, no, actually, they're peppermint clutch. Peppermint clutch was clutch number two. They're called butternut pecan and peppermint clutch as to distinguish between the two clutches, the two different uh, nests of nestlings that my birds had because those were the flavors of the ice cream bucket that they were born in. So <laughs> the ice cream buckets somehow make really great nests for the finches. Uh, it's just better than any of the store-bought ones we've ever tried. And you can throw them away after they're done because they get really nasty inside with all those babies. All right, buy this fern, buy this fern. Yay, we've got more money. So I will show off all my pets. Um, Luke doesn't live with me, he lives with my aunt. I moved out of my aunts and into the mountains so I could be with my fiance. You know, just moving and grooving, growing, uh, becoming an adult. I wonder who bought my little, my little willow with my little melons. I hope they're happy. I hope they like my, my melon willow. I wonder who takes all my cactus. Hmm, I'm getting really attached to these little villagers. I think it's time to sim and play virtual villagers again soon. <laughs> And then Skyback Rider, what is your favorite bug? Good question. Today my favorite bug is the mirror spider because I saw more amazing pictures of them. The mirror spider, uh, if you look it up, is an amazing little critter. It's an arachnid. Um, a lot of people are terrified of arachnids. I don't particularly enjoy them when I, you know, might be alone. Like when you get out of the shower and you reach for a towel and there's a spider on it, that's probably the moment I don't really enjoy seeing that spider the most, but it's okay. You know, you, you just like grab it and shake it and chase the spider out. Uh, but favorite bug is definitely the mirror spider today because it's very beautiful. 
very, very, very beautiful. It just looks like a piece of art, and every now and then it's just so satisfying to sit back and look at an animal whose very existence just looks like a piece of art. That's kind of how I feel for my finches. So that's really fun. And then, ooh, Felix asks, my favorite extinct animal who is not a dinosaur? Very good question. <laughs> I have actually not done a lot of research into extinct animals, but right now the one that comes to mind, there's supposed to be basically a guinea pig that used to be as big as a hippo that roamed around Florida, I have been told. I learned that somewhere in middle school, I think one of my science teachers was trying to engage us and get us excited about the world and around us and the world of the past and so I learned about this giant guinea pig that used to be the size of a hippo that roamed around Florida. I don't know if it was some distant ancestor of the capybara and that's what they were talking about but that's that's the one that comes to mind. Uh, really you guys tend to be far better versed in the lore. Ooh, let's plant this. I want to see what it turns into. Oh it's not worth a lot. Hmm that's okay. But yeah, you guys tend to be far better versed in the lore of extinct animals than I ever have. I've usually been more focused on conservation, which means you focus on like the more modern species. So I'm very happy to learn what your guys' favorites are because you teach me so much about animals and prehistory and prehistoric everything. It's very exciting. Ah, so there we go. Well, we've got quite a few questions answered about favorites. I hope you guys will share some of yours. What's your favorite bug for the day? What's the strangest plant that you've ever seen or heard of? What kind of pets? Do you have pets? Maybe we'll do a show off your pets 700 special. That sounds like it would be a lot of fun. And next time we come around, I will answer some more of your questions. And I look forward to spending some time with you guys here in our little greenhouse, watching as our little plants grow and we get to get, have a little bit of time to get to know each other better. Oh man, I'm thinking way too hard about those villagers and their unique quirks. Hmm, might be time to start playing virtual villagers pretty soon. All right, everyone, I hope you are having a wonderful day, and I will see you again next time. So I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye!